Hello, valued viewers. This is Gruntmeister of the Grim Reapers, and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at CubeSim's AIMXY Head Tracker. This is meant to be an alternative solution to traditional head tracking methods that often require a triple diode IR emitter attached to the side of your head. And spoilers, AIMXY's Head Tracker does not require this. We will be looking specifically at its implementation and viability within DCS as an alternative to track IR, open track, and even VR. Full disclosure, neither CubeSim nor its remote branch AMXY offered any monetary or hardware benefits for a favorable review. As such, this will be a fully candid review without any outside influences. For the purposes of this video, we will be discussing what will be shipped to you, first time setup, feature comparison between AMXY, OpenTrack, and VR solutions, and pros and cons between the three setups. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here's the box I was shipped. In this case, it was subjected to shipping from China and delivered to the United States. I received it via the United Parcel Service and wasn't expecting good handling. With this in mind, it is AMXY's responsibility to ensure the product is in good condition when the consumer receives it. The packaging and exterior box looked a bit crude and unimpressive, however, we're more interested in what's inside this box. Alright, inside the package there is a little cushioning, but considering the product itself is quite light, there is greater room for error if it's tossed around in transit. With that in mind, the product showed up in good condition, no bends, breaks, or signs of impact on the box itself. Once inside to the products, there's three components. The box that contains the AIMXY hardware, a smaller box for extension cords and adapters, and even a thank you note to the consumer. Out of curiosity, I had to open the thank you letter first to see inside. Interestingly, it seems they don't have localized thank you notes for international buyers, even though they ship internationally. I ran each card through Google Translate, and bless its heart, it tried to translate it. Essentially, the first card expresses gratitude for selecting AIMXY as your head tracking solution, and the second card is for returns or refunds. When in doubt about problems with your AIMXY head tracker, be sure to visit their website. A link will be posted here now, and will be in the video description. The main box with the AIMXY holds the camera itself, a 3.5 inch or 8.9 centimeter long stick with a lens on the right side. The external plastic seems to be made of industry standard molded plastic and not 3D print PLA and is of good quality. A 6.5 foot or 2 meter USB-C cord is supplied to connect the device to your computer. Finally in this box is a mount for the device which, well, perhaps this will sum it up best. Positions. We have adopted a deformable base design. No, no way. This freaking bends. Wow. <laughs> yep, it's made out of a deformable material, which means it can be shaped to sit on a surface or perch on top of a monitor. Now, the smaller box that was included addresses extensions and compatibility. Most people won't have a USB C connector on their PC which is why AMXY was considerate of this included a USB-C to USB-A adapter and a female to female USB-C connector in order to use the included 40 inch or 101 centimeter extension cord if necessary. Taking a look at the instructions for first time use on the AMXY website might seem a little confusing and daunting, but have no fear. All that needs to be done is to plug in the supplied USB-C cable into the left side of the device. I would recommend using the little clips on the back of the camera clip as it's there to secure the cord and keep it from being pulled out by accident. From here you plug the cable into a free USB port on your PC. I luckily have a built-in USB-C port on my front I.O. panel so I can plug it right in. If you don't have this luxury, then you may use the included USB-C to USB-A adapter and then plug it in. Then place the camera around the center of your setup. Eh, won't be needing this here. Anyway, 
AMXY recommends this be placed at the base of the monitor as shown here, but it can also work from the top of the monitor. From here, the software download can be a little confusing as the instructions and the included QR code on the box don't take you directly to the manual page. However, with a little navigating, you can easily find the download for the AMXY software. Once the software is installed, you should be good to go for first time use. As you can see at the current moment, I have a couple of uh, distractions that might happen in the background. For example, I've got a moving fan right there that uh, might obscure your head tracking. Um, and you have a light back there um, with normal head tracking using track IR or, or, or track hat. Most of the time would uh, actually interfere with the head tracking software itself as it's looking for those lights. Uh, most of the time a light emitting diode that you'll see usually uh, um, right here. Uh, that I have still attached to my old headset. Um, at this moment, it's still tracking my head. If you notice, uh, this this box right here is showing that it's following, it's tracking my face. If we double click on the interface right here, you can see the geometry that it is following my head with, um, and that's how it's doing all of its translation purposes. Now, double clicking again, we'll bring it back to the screen. You can right click and uh, do recognition, uh, and you can suspend the device and uh, change settings from here as necessary. So with that, what we're going to do is jump into DCS and see how this all translates now. Um, as a disclaimer, I have not changed any of these. Uh, you could actually come into the config. Uh, you change the plus and the minus. That will set symmetric and asymmetric. Uh, all you have to do is double click within here. And you can change your points as needed. Right click to delete and it goes back to its default. Now with that in mind, we are going to go ahead and get into DCS. Now for the sake of this video, I am going to try and uh, talk to, into this uh, camera as much as I can. But uh, you might see my head, my head and my eyes uh, move up here as that's where my screen is at. Um, now I'll keep the head tracking in here just so you can see there's a lot of uh, factors that can come in for obstructing uh, any sort of head tracking. For example, having these headphones on, you can see that for the most part, the head tracking software is doing nice to um, only see my head. Um, and then at this point, I also, if you have noticed, uh, I am wearing my glasses. Um, and I have these giant floodlights right here um, in front of me. And despite all of that, the head tracking software does seem to be able to continuously capture my image. So that's uh, that's good. Okay, so we're jumping in now. You can see that uh, it seems a little bit of rough. Um, we might need to set a zero out. I am using the default curves. So with that, what we will do is jump into a hot Apache here and see how it feels to, out of the box, look around. All right, so I do notice if I put my hand up or anything to scratch my nose or something like that, it does kind of go wonky if you notice that. Uh, let me show you just real quick if I do something like that, if I'm waving my hand around. Of course, the head tracking software cannot see my face, so it cannot do anything. Um, so we're going to do this. Um, give it a little bit of a look around. It is very sensitive starting off from the box, but it does look like I have good visibility. might have to adjust some of the curves on this, but uh, let's, let's take a little quick look around. Um, hmm. Okay, yep, I do still have a uh, visible look capability. Go ahead and lift up. Feels like a lot of easy use. Um, if I try to fixate on something on the ground, it is... That's actually pretty smooth. I'll give just a little, bit, a little bit of correction to my face. Give a little bit of correction here, and yeah, I can look around. A little bit more flying around, shall we? Got some threats in front of us. We're going to do a little bit of jinking and flying around here, see if we can actually... Uh, you know what? Let's talk to uh, George here. Sending burst to 50. Copy. Pausing Hellfire. Got some uh, BPs up in front of us here that will shoot us out of the sky if we're not careful. Missile set to low. Missile mode, low ball. D 
just leaving. Right. Laser on. Seize it. Firing. And rifle. Now here's an interesting question. Can we? S oh, we can slew around. Look at that. We can slew around. Lasers off. Target okay. Destroyed. Target's been destroyed. Before we get shot of the sky, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn us around. I'm sitting here at 130 torque. That's not good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It's been um, a very long time since I've flown the Apache in the back seat. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, that is a, uh, a big thing to me, being able to slew around, um, slew my head around as I look in F2 or F3 mode. Um, of course, that's going to matter only to me, really, because of cinematic video purposes. Look at that. Isn't that not beautiful? All right. Yep, okay. So far, this has been pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and land, and I'm going to adjust my curves a little bit, and uh, I will be back. Alright, welcome back, Valley viewers. At this point, I have uh, set up my configurations a little bit better. Should be a little bit um, more manageable now at this point. Not seem nearly as clunky, and uh, have comfortable maneuverability throughout the cockpit. Now, at this point... We're going to set up with our new axes uh, I've already gone through and set up with pitch, da, roll, as well as our X, Y, and, and done uh, tweaks on those just to see how they perform. Uh, and then in this situation, I have set up a, just a little bit of a da motion here of uh, asymmetric, so I'm not having to do nearly as extreme head motions here or anything that feel uncomfortable. So with that, we're going to take off again and uh, have George kill one of these BMPs that we have off to our left. Okay, he's got targets. Blazing. Now look at the first one. Get us into a situation where fire. And we're out. Engaging. And rifle. Watch this baby go in. Fantastic. All right. And there you go. It feels um, very comfortable being able to look around now. I uh, don't feel like I'd have any, really any problems with it. It doesn't look like anything really conflicts. We're going to go ahead and come in for a landing. Again, value viewers, at this point I'm doing this with a very unoptimal setting. Uh, I've got glasses on just to see how that's going to screw with the head tracking, as well as an overhead light that would probably flash into my eyes, and uh, as well as having this pretty, rather funky headset on, just to see how the head tracking software is able to pick up the noise and be able to filter it out uh, into something that's usable for head tracking. Uh, as a as a disclaimer, uh, I also do have most of the stuff set to the defaults that come out of the gate, uh, just so we can see plug and play. Again, I did have to change the curves just a little bit, uh, just to make it not seem nearly as clunky. Uh, it's going to need probably just a little bit more refining, but we'll probably do that as we continue this review. Alrighty, next up we pit the AMXY against what I typically use, the popular choice of Track IR as far as features. I will go over what AMXY offers versus Track Hat Open Track hardware I attach to my headset. As technology progresses, more head tracking solutions are ditching the IR diodes. As such, AMXY doesn't require any headgear, allowing for full freedom of movement. What this means is I no longer need to put anything on for DCS to be able to recognize my head movements. This further means no tension from headphones against the head and no stiff necks. For ease of use, I will say once the initial setup is done, then it's as simple to use AMXY as it is to use OpenTrack solutions. 
Still easier than VR by a long shot. Just open the software and you're ready to go. The big difference between Amex Y Head Tracker and OpenTrack, and even VR, is its technology that registers a face and its position relative to the camera. What this means is the sensor isn't looking for a light pattern that can be easily obscured by background noise or turning your head so much that a diode becomes masked. So even as I look across a 49 inch or 124 centimeter ultra wide monitor, I don't suffer loss of tracking. Now another thing I would like to highlight, and I'm sure folks are wondering, what sort of resources does the AMXY take up in order to operate? Well, in this case, you can set it based on your PC specs. While most head tracking software in general won't eat up a lot of CPU or GPU resources, AMXY gives you the option of how much computing power it takes up in low, regular, or high resolution. Honestly, I haven't noticed much of a difference in my CPU usage under medium settings. Most other solutions don't offer this type of customization, and we know how beefy of a computer you need for decent VR. Now, of course, with the good comes the bad. First, we'll start off with pricing, as this will typically be what makes or breaks a decision. Compared to options like the Track Hat or other cheap head tracking solutions, a $200 price tag is astronomical. As of this video, the baseline price is $153 US dollars, however, depending on where you're at, it can be a little more or a lot more in shipping. AMXY and its parent company CubeSim operate from China and will be subject to customs and shipping fees. So if you're in China and would like to purchase the AMXY head tracker, it will of course be cheaper. For European counterparts, it could potentially be even more than the $200 total, so keep that in mind. This will still be about $40 more than the Track IR5 pricing, but the AMXY of course doesn't require headgear to work. And this is still a price that is cheaper than most VR headsets, let's be honest. Now this one is for careful consideration. It's not noted up front, but it is mentioned deep in the instructions. The AMXY software will not connect to the camera and function without an internet connection. I have reached out to the AMXY representative on this and there is no workaround for this requirement on startup. To note, however, once the software has connected to the camera and it is in full head tracker mode, you may disconnect the internet connection to it and it will still function without issue. This will unfortunately rule out the AMXY head tracker if you're looking for a head tracking solution while offline or in an area without a connection. I'm sure a few of you would be concerned as well about why a head tracker camera would need an internet connection and potential security issues that may arise while the camera is not in use. Luckily, AMXY has included a lens cover. I personally cover all of my cameras when not in use, so this is standard procedure. Now this isn't really a huge deal, but just know that you might see some interesting readings if anything were to truly obscure your face, like taking a drink. Anything that would greatly confuse the sensor for something other than a face. If you ever encounter a situation where the sensor is capturing a bystander's face instead, for example, the software does allow you to narrow the field of view and focus just on you. So far as regular operation, I don't have any actual gripes about it. Some of the residual jankiness in the head tracking can be remedied with a better tuned curve profile, which I'll continue to work on. The two things I would recommend for CubeSim would be to invest in language localization, especially if they're wanting to get in touch with their international consumer base. I feel the first time setup instructions could be better streamlined as well. A possibility in the future would be adding a dedicated storage chip in the device itself that comes with the 1.0 version of the AMXY software, and that would make it truly plug and play. The second recommendation would be to permit usage of the head tracker without the need for an internet connection on startup, as that can very much limit who CubeSim can market this hardware to. This won't be an issue to a majority of the valued viewers, but nonetheless, it will be difficult to market to those who travel with DCS or other simulations that allow for head tracking and they want to play away from home. All in all, this is a good competitor for the head tracking market for what it offers. A sleek, slim profile that takes up as little real estate as possible while satisfying the need for a solution that translates head movements into the simulation of your choice. 
AMXY is compatible with over a hundred different games and simulations, with DCS being one of them. The support team has been very responsive to requests and troubleshooting, often getting back to me within 12 to 24 hours. Is this the head tracker for you? It very much depends on your preferences. Though, if you've made it to this part of the video and you've decided you would like to purchase the AMXY head tracker, then this should sweeten the deal. Until December 31st, 2022, you can use the code CUBESIMAIMXYZ5, that's CUBESIMAIMXYZ-5, at checkout for $5 off the total price of your order. Until next time, this is Gruntmeister, and I hope I've clarified on if the AIM XY Head Tracker from CubeSim is the head tracking solution for you.